It's time for the interview. It's time for breakthrough. If you're ready for next level blessings, abundance, and prosperity, then it's time to tune in to the interview with your girl, Trish M. Hey, fabulous ladies. Hey, it's your girl, Trish M. And did you know that I own a booty? Yes, ladies, yes. Check out Trish M. Boutique today and use code PODCAST to get 25% off the total order. Go to www.trishmfashions.com. That's Trish M. Fashions with an S. Dot com and don't forget use code podcast to get 25% off hello 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 everybody hey y'all <laughs> it's your girl Trish M and y'all know what time it is, right? It is time, y'all. It's time. It's time for the interview with your girl, Trish M. And I'm going to give everybody just a second to come on in because you know I'm not on here very long, but I do come on and give you some juicy nuggets that will help take your whole life to a whole new level. It's the interview, y'all. Y'all know that this is the place where we look in so that we could be better out in the world that we live in. And so I'm super excited, y'all. I'm super excited. It's your girl, Trisha. It's your faith and fashion specialist. All things faith, all things fashion. As a woman of God, prophet, teacher, evangelist, pastor, I'm always trying to build people up in their faith and in the things of God. And as a fashionista, boutique owner, I love empower women to look good and feel good about who they are. All right. So thank you. If you're tuning in for the first time, second time, third time, a hundred time, shout your girl out. Let me know that you're watching me live and you can even put where you're from. All right. But anyway, I'm here to give you some good stuff, y'all. I'm excited. I'm super excited. We're on this fake journey, right? So we are on this faith journey. And on this faith journey, I'm challenging you to take your faith to another level so that you can receive all that God has for you. And if you're going to receive, if you're going to go to another level in this season, this time, in this hour, there are some things that you got to do right now. As I was meditating uh, last night on the content for the podcast, God gave me this scripture. Now, the, the title of this podcast, y'all, is the problem with your if. Come on, somebody. Have you ever had something in you that God has given you to do? Have you ever, you know that you're called, you know that you're chosen, you know that God has given you a particular thing to do, whether that's business, ministry, being a wife, a husband, a mother, a father, whatever it is. And then there's this big if that stares you in the face. If, if, if I had this, if this works out, if that works out, if that happens, if this happens, and there's this big cloud of if that's surrounding you for such a time as this, as you prepare to step out on faith, as you prepare to walk in the things that God has called you to do. Now, I want to read you a scripture. I'm, I'm, I got two different uh, versions of it that I really want y'all to hear, because this is so good, y'all. So I'm in the book of Mark and, and, and remember the title of this is the problem because there's a problem with your if, okay? If God said it, that's it, but there's a problem with your if. So in Mark chapter nine, it, and it says, so they brought the boy, but when he saw Jesus, the demon convulsed the child horribly and he fell to the ground, writhing and foaming at the mouth. How long has he been this way? Jesus asked the father. And he replies, says he was small and the demon often makes him fall into the fire into water to kill or, uh, or to kill him. Oh, have mercy on us and do something if you can. See, there's your if. Watch this. Did y'all know that God has a problem with our if? So where did I get that from? So he said, do something, you know, have mercy on us. Uh, do something about it if you can. Jesus's response is, if I can. <laughs> Come on, 
on somebody. See, I need to part right there because some of you are questioning if God can open up this door, if God will allow certain things to happen in your life, if God will let you see breakthrough, if God will allow you to experience this or experience that in your whole mind, you got this idea of what it is, but it's somewhere, and you may not have even said it, but somewhere along the line, there is this if. And so the man, he said, you know, if you can, you know, he's just being cautious. He's just talking, you know, because he's in need of something from the father. He said, if you can, Jesus said, if I can. And here's the next part. He said, anything is possible. And here's Jesus as if, if I can, anything is possible. And, and his if back to you is if. You have faith. Come on, somebody. See, we could park right there. Jesus, the man was like, you know, he, he's been going through. He's been dealing with this, been doing that. And he said, you know, have mercy and, and heal him if you can. He was like, if I can. And he said, your if to me is, is doubting if I can do this. See, some of us are doubting if God can do this. Some of us are doubting if it can happen. And God is looking back at you like, if, listen, just because it's not happening in the allotted time in your head that is supposed to happen, just because doors aren't flinging open and saying, hey, here I go. He's saying, that doesn't negate the fact that I can. That doesn't negate the fact that I will. That doesn't negate the fact that things are happening even when you don't not even even when you know not and even when you don't even feel like things are happening he said that doesn't negate me he said what is done your if negates you so he said anything is possible if you have faith and so i just want to encourage somebody that 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 you can do this you got this a shift is happening listen i'm speaking prophetically there is a shift that it's happening in the spirit realm for god's people there is something that is happening like never before where there is blessings and favor and breakthrough things are happening and they're happening fast and so god is saying don't give me an if he said, because if you do, if you doubt who I am in this process, if you doubt that I can help you, if you doubt that the door can be open, he said, I'm going to give you an if back. He said, yeah, it can happen if you got faith. Come on, somebody. He said, yes, it can happen if you got faith. Now, here's the next thing. The father of this child that was demon possessed instantly replied. He said, I do have faith but please help me to have more. In some translations, it says, yes, I believe, but help me with the part that has disbelief. See, there is a part of you right now that has some form of disbelief. How do I know? How do I know? Because you're beginning to doubt. You're beginning to second guess. You're beginning to question. Um, depression can come in. Anxiety can come in. A little bit of fear. See, that's those are signs that you got an if in your spirit. Come on, y'all. Those are signs to let you know that there is something that is hindering you from tapping in and that something is on the deep, uh, on the inside of you. And so the man responds back. He's like, you know, I do believe like, like here's all of us, like no matter what we're going through, there's a part of us that knows that God is able. But a lot of times we begin to look at everything around us and they begin to speak louder to us than the God that is able. For example, your bank account, for example, uh, circumstances and situations, and, and, and you're on the verge of something big, but your environment, your circumstances, your situation tells you something different. And so God is saying, oh, okay, so you got an if for me. So I got an if for you. If you have faith, anything is anything is possible for you. And so the guy, and here's the thing. I love, I love the fact that the guy said he was transparent with God. He was transparent with Jesus. He said, but I do believe I need you to help me with my unbelief. We have to be transparent with God and saying, God, I believe, but there's this part of me that I got to surrender to you. And that part of me that I got to surrender to you is the part that I question. It's the part where my insecurities are. It's the part where my greatest fears are. It's the part where uh, these circumstances and situations are. You know, some of us are having relational issues that make us doubt uh, the blessings 
and the favor that God has for us. Some of us, it could be issues in relationships, issues with job, issues with just your family, issues with your with your children, issues, issues, issues. And so there's this part of you that reminds yourself of God, that God can do anything. But then the issues and the circumstance remind you that you're in a situation right now. And because of the situation that you may be in or the situation may be coming later, I don't know, You, you it, there's the part of you that wants to doubt. And so God says, I have a problem with your if. I have a problem with your if that you're not being radical in this season enough to, 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 to tap into a newfound level of favor and blessings. See, God is not moved by tears. I preached this last Sunday in uh, my sermon. I said, God is not moved by tears. He's moved by obedience that comes through. Guess what? Your faith. All right. So if there is faith, there has to be obedience and the obedience has to talk louder than your situation. I'm going to say that again. Your obedience ha has to talk louder than a situation or a circumstance. You will say that no matter what it looks like, sounds like or seems like because I got faith and my faith produces obedience. I'm going to do it scared. I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to speak anyway. I'm going to go anyway. I'm going to invest anyway. I'm going to sow the seed anyway. And you begin to do it out of obedience to your faith and knowing that God is the God that you serve and that nothing, absolutely nothing is impossible for him. So the man said, if you can, Jesus was like, if I can, bro, you got me confused. Like I'm not, I'm not your pastor. I'm not your brother from around the way. I'm the holy of holies. I'm the ancient of days. I'm the one that parted Red Seas. I'm the one that parted the Jordan River. I'm the one that calmed star storms. So you're coming to me like I'm a common man and not like I'm the God of man. Come on, somebody. Have you ever found yourself coming to God like he's a common man? And we don't, we don't call God a common man, but we come to him like a common man. We come to him second guessing his power, second guessing if he's with us, second guessing his authority, second guessing, you know, God, I mean, you know, I mean, I'm just saying. And then that if, uh, that if spirit creeps in and God is saying, check your if spirit, because some of us need deliverance from the if spirit, because God says, you got to know that, you know, that, you know, when you're ready to tap into a new season in God, you can't tap into it with a, if you can, God, you got to tap into this new season. We just entered into the last quarter of the year. We just entered into the fall season. This is a new season, like naturally for us, but it's all say a new season supernaturally y'all gotta catch that and because it's a new season naturally and supernaturally for us we have to we have to tap in like uh knowing that we know the god that we serve like in this season fall can be one of the hardest seasons for many of us why does why is fall one of the hardest seasons i'm gonna say this and many of you may be feeling this because dead things have to fall off come on y'all dead things have to fall off not just not just in the in the natural but dead things also have to uh, have to fall off in the supernatural. You got to let go of doubt. You got to let go of fear. You got to let go of insecurity. You got to let go of low self-esteem. You got to let go of relationships. You got to let go and let God. You got to let go of the very thing that you've been trying to control this whole time. And you got, you, you've never really given control to God. This is the season and the time which can be one of the most challenging seasons of our lives because we have to let go. We have to let God because in our own strength, we can't do it. And so in letting go and letting God, you're saying, God, it's not an if in my spirit anymore because I know the God that I serve. I know the God that can do anything. The God that can give me peace when storms are raging all around me. I want to read this version. And the message version. Y'all get this. I just really want this to get in your spirit, okay? It says, 
uh, uh, he asked the boy's father. This is a different version. It's the message version. He asked the boy's father, how long has this been going on? You know, the boy got the demons. The boy got the issues, right? He said, well, how long has this been going on? And the man said, ever since he was a little boy, many times it pictures him in the fire, river, do away with him. If you can, if, now here's the question he asked in the message, message version. He said, if you can do anything, do it. Have a heart and help us. And Jesus said, if this is a message verse, you know, the message version be in your face, be like, look on me. Like, let me just share this with you. So the message version, Jesus said, if he said, there are no ifs among believers. Oh, see, we could part right there. See, that will just slap you in the face right there and, and, and get you may help you get it together because I don't know about you, but I have been in some if seasons. I have been in some seasons where I wasn't for sure about some things and there was an if in my spirit. Even if I didn't, even if I didn't say the if, there has been some ifs in my spirit. And so Jesus said, yes, yeah, there are no ifs amongst, among believers. So I want to remind you that you are believer and when you find yourself with an if in your spirit then you got to you got to remind yourself you can't have an iffy in your spirit if you're relying on God now i will say this if you are relying on you you can if all day long because you can fail you all day long man can fail you all day long but when you're relying on God there are no ifs in in, in him because he can do anything and so Jesus said, if there are no ifs in the, in, 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 amongst believers, anything can happen. He said, and then it says, no sooner were the words uh, out of his mouth than the father cried, then I believe. Help me with my doubts. I want to petition you that you need to start telling God, God, there are some things that I really do believe. I really believe that you are, that you can, and that you're able. But the problem that I have is when I begin to look at things, I begin to lose sight of who you are. When I begin to really focus on issues, I lose sight of who you are. So many of us have to just begin to let go and let God and say, God, I do believe, but sometimes I get caught up in everything around me that I forget who you are and what you're capable of doing. And I begin to have to, to try to do it myself. Oftentimes we try to do it ourselves and that can get us in a place where God never wanted us to be. Because if we could do it ourselves, then why would we ever need God? Okay, now listen to this. Ham how do you handle your doubt? Well, I just gave one of the, one of the things I really want to say. I'm going to give you some quick pointers and I'm out of here, right? So how do you handle the doubt? You have the belief, you have the faith, but then when that doubt creeps in, how do you deal with the doubt? How do you deal with the if? One, you got to acknowledge that you have it. You, just like this man of God was. He was he was he was real and he was relevant. He was raw. He was giving him truth. He said, but I do believe. But he he had to give him truth. But you know, there are times when I don't believe. And you could be specific. Like God, I don't believe when my when my money gets down to this amount and I have this bill, I start to worry and I take away the authority that I give you to, to be the provider, the Jehovah Jireh. I take that away and I try to do things in my own strength. So that's where I know doubt comes in there. And then God, when this happens, see, this is in our prayer time, prayer time is communication with God. We have to talk to God about our doubts. We have to talk to God about our ifs. Why? Because it's in those moments that he's able to strengthen us and help us to get past it. It, 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 it is something that happens in prayer. There's a peace that comes. There's a, there's a stillness that comes. There's a power that comes when we get in God's presence and begin to have a real raw and relevant conversation with the King. Number two, how are you handling your doubts? One, I just said, you got to be real raw and relevant with God and talk to him about why you have the ifs. Number two, you got to stop overthinking things. Listen, Many times in the natural, we just 
overthink things. You know how you can have a whole conversation in your head about what people said, how they said it, what they did, how they did it, what you could have done, what you should have done. And so all these thoughts begin to rage and you begin to overthink the process. You begin to overthink everything. And here, here's what happens a lot of times when we overthink things. Overthinking can bring in anxiety. Overthinking can bring in fear. Overthinking can put you in a place of insecurity and hopelessness because why? You let your thoughts wonder. And so how do you handle the ifs and the doubts and the busts? You gotta, one, be real with God. Two, you gotta stop overthinking the situation, right? And, and the way you're thinking about it, the person that you're talking about or thinking about may not even be looking at it like that. Or, you know, it, it, it's just so many things that the enemy uses to get us off track. Another thing, well, okay, I'm going to keep going over. One, be real raw and relevant with God. Two, stop overthinking. Three, request assistance. Come on, somebody. See, this is big. You got to have accountability. When you know you need a push in the right direction when it comes to faith, when it comes to your next level, when it comes to your breakthrough, you got to get that somebody that can keep you accountable, somebody that can help you stay focused, somebody that can help you stay in your lane and do what you got to do, somebody that can give you clarity and guidance, somebody that can pray with you about the vision that you have, but you're having these iffy moments, you got to have an accountability partner. You got to ask for help. You got to let it be known that you need help in this particular area. So one, be real, raw, and relevant, transparent with God. Uh, number two, stop overthinking things. Three, get you an accountability partner partner and request assistance, request prayer, request uh, 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 an ear to hear, uh, re request counseling, therapy, whatever it is, you, you've got to make it happen because listen, this new season that we're in, you got to let go of the ifs and you got to walk by faith, trusting that you're going to end this year strong. I'm going to end this year strong and we're going to end this year strong. And the last thing to get over your if and your doubts, you got to develop determination. You got to be so determined to win. You know, you got to be so determined that, that God got you. The faith is all about determination. Uh, determined to not waver, uh, that no matter what happens, that God called you to it and he will certainly bring you through it. I'm going to say that again. Determination will help you have the mindset that if God called you to it, he will certainly bring you through it. One more time for the woman in the back. Listen, determination is all about knowing that if God called you to it, he will certainly bring you through it. So having faith and releasing these ifs and these doubts and these maybes, you got to have determination. So let's break it down again. One, you got to have that real, raw, and relevant conversation with God, letting him know about the doubts and the concerns that you have. You two, you got to stop overthinking. Three, you got to get you an accountability part and request assistance. Do whatever you got to do. And, 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 and then the uh, three, four, I'm on four. Four, you got to develop determination like never before in this hour so that you can get all that God has for you. So why do I say you got to de develop determination? Because if you don't develop determination to get all that God has for you so you can get to this next level, then you're going to be a double-minded man or woman. Oh, come on, somebody. You're going to be double-minded, right? Why are you going to be double-minded? Without determination, you can waver. You could go back to the iffy maybe moment. You could go back to the what if and how, uh, how about that. And, and you could go back to overthinking and you could go back to all of that stuff, not having accountability, not having somebody to push you and charge you. You, you could go back to, to wavering, right? But you got to understand that if you go back to that, you're gonna you're not going to be able to get rid of the ifs and the doubts and the maybes. And you're going to be considered to God a double-minded man, a double-minded woman. Stop being double-minded and live boldly by faith. James 1, 6 through 8, he said, but he must ask in faith without any doubting. For the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For that man ought not to, es to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord. Being a double-minded man, 
unstable in all his ways. See, I could preach on that scripture right there. Maybe I'll talk about this next week. But it says that if you're going to not do some of the things that I told you to do today, you're just like you're being tossed here and there. And one minute you're good, the next minute you're not, you're double-minded. And you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be real. You're double-minded. And God said, if that's who you are, you can't expect to receive nothing from him because why? God is moved by faith, not by your tears. Listen, we all go through something, but we got to go through to get to. So listen again, God is moved by your faith. Your faith produces obedience. Obedience produces manifestation. Manifestation produces the harvest that you've been believing for for years now. Barbecue or mildew, you decide. All right, I'm going to get out of here. I pray that that has just really blessed your whole heart. Whole heart. Y'all say whole heart. I pray that that blessed your whole heart. Tune in next week, same time, same place. I'm going to be going live and I'm going to be encouraging your faith because we have got to end this year strong. All right, so take care. God bless. And I will see you next week.